Hey there guys, so today we have another review and what we have here is Hill Farmstead's Susan. Um, this is an IPA from there, probably the most iconic IP, a single IPA. And before I get into that, I do I have mentioned this top 10 uh, beers of 2014 video that I'm going to do. Uh, I will get to that, but I do want you guys to uh, have any, uh, if you guys have any comments or questions about the video or like, you know, hey, you should do this in the video, let me know in the comments below. Basically, I plan on, you know, uh, going through my top 10 beers of 2014. It's going to be sort of more towards an icon, my most iconic beers that I've had uh, instead of just top because I'll, I'll explain in the video. And also, um, obviously, I will do a uh, honorable mentions kind of thing because there's just so many beers. I can't just only pick 10. That's just crazy in my mind. Um, and maybe I'll just pick in like in the honorable mentions, like, you know, best barley wine, best porter, you know, maybe something like that. Uh, who knows? But anyway, uh, we're talking about this beer. This is Hill Farm said Susan. Uh, it's a single IPA. Um, just got, got it filled last week and sort of, you know, there's a thing in back of my head going like, drink your hoppy beers from Hill Farm said soon, quick. Uh, it's like diminishing returns and obviously there are diminishing returns. And I'm not curious to really see, uh, how bad the diminishing returns are. With something like Heady Topper, I was able to get a case or so and, you know, you know, spread it out a lot with my friends, but it also keeps some to sort of do the Heady Topper weekly where I had one Heady Topper every week and that was fun and sort of see how the uh, beer evolved. Uh, if you've seen the videos, the beer is extremely resilient and barely changes even after weeks and weeks. Uh, but with Hill Farms, <laughs> I don't really care to see. Uh, I'm just going to drink it. So uh, <laughs> there we go. Uh, you might have seen that. Oh, there's go. There's a previous review of this beer. Uh, I think I reviewed it about only about four months ago. But I'm always curious, obviously, to see how a beer evolves. Maybe the batch has changed. Maybe my palate has changed. Uh, maybe I could find uh, different tasting notes of this beer. Uh, that is an annoying beer to uh, growl or pour. But anyway, um, anyway, so yeah, so I'm just re-reviewing it and I'm having it anyway. I'm doing it for you guys, you know, because I'm drinking it anyway. So let's do it. Um, so the beer comes in a, oh man, that's a super, just gorgeous color. It's um, that hazy uh, uh, signature Hill Farm says slash treehouse color, that golden orange, but it's a little bit more, yeah, it seems more opaque and more gently more orange than um, the other beers. Um, and it is just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, this is, yeah, this is like perfect uh, color for me. <laughs> just hazy and uh, really rich kind of color. Let's get the aroma. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, the first like hit, the first hit is just tropical peachy goodness. Um, it's sort of a note that, you know, you get in some familiar beers like Dinner had it and Hill Farmstead beers have it and Treehouse beers for me have it. But this one's a little bit more juicy, I noticed. Something about it is, is a little bit different. I get a big pop of, again, it's like peach mango-y kind of thing along with that kind of big citrus note, but it's really nice. I, that's why I specifically like this beer. This beer, by the way, uses Citra, Rewaka, and Simcoe. So it might be that Citra in there that's really offering another, you know, plus over some other beers that are not using it. There's another uh, a dank thing in there. There's a little bit of this, um, yeah, dank nose. A little, little bit um, Simcoe-y, but it's not as uh, aggressive as some other beers. Um, it's not as um, cat pee-like. It's just another layer of note. Um, as, as, as you get the first sniff, you get a lot of fruit. Later on, you get a grassiness, a dank note in the back end. A lot of citrus peel. As I smell it more, I'm getting more of this kind of um, zesty kind of aroma, less of this big pop of juiciness that I was got, got on the first aroma, uh, first sniff. I'm looking more and more again for that tropical aroma, but I'm now more getting that underlying aroma. A really complex aromatic beer. I'm going to stop yapping on. I'm going to chase this. <laughs> yep. Uh... <laughs> That is a familiar beer, and that is, man, that is so good. I mean, this is just my favorite IPA, so like, I'm reaffirming that fact right now. Jesus Christ. In the front, it's this wonderful kind of, what is it? Yeah. Um, sweet grapefruit juice, maybe. Uh, something uh, very, quite zesty. Something grapefruity, something citrusy, maybe like tangerine, but it's not as bitter um, or tart, obviously, because, you know, there's not a tart beer. Uh, it's just a subtle kind of essence of grapefruit and that kind of zest and peel, the oils of the citrus. 
Again, the tangerine comes through, a little bit of that clementine, a little bit, a lot of that kind of juicy citrus stuff. Um, moves on to pineapple, that bright kind of pineapple note. There's all these kind of wonderful tropical bright notes. Um, back end, it transitions very well. I was talking about those fruits up front. Now I'm getting this kind of grassy drying on the back end. Um, a little bit of this kind of uh, Simcoe dank quality, but actually a um, definitive grassiness, um, you know, almost towards like a, a, a pilsner or something, something, a familiar kind of drying that you might get in a, in a lager or, yeah, a, a traditional lager. Man, um, the transitioning is crazy. I mean, I'm just looking for, you know, th th there's, there's this fruit here, there's that fruit there, there's mangoes, there's kumquat there's guava there's guava on the back end yeah that's what it is i recently um i, I always try to build my palate and uh, randomly i think one of my family members brought home guava and uh i picked it out and just smelled it and i was like okay there it is right here i just smelled it and you know a few days ago there it is on my palate at the at the tip uh top of my head and that is that's what i'm getting on the palate right now guava tropical grapefruit tangerine grassiness Dank quality on the back, almost this kind of crackery malt, a little bit of like this chewiness going on throughout. Um, I almost get this kind of bubblicious kind of flavor. Uh, maybe it's the yeast, maybe it's the malt. I don't know what it is. It's just the signature kind of Hill Farmstead kind of quality that I get also in some other beer, uh, breweries too. Wonderful creamy mouthfeel, very light on carbonation. That's a very Hill Farmstead kind of signature hoppy beer. Um, theme. Um, yeah, very light, very light on carbonation. It's just so soft on the palate. Incredible stuff. Um, yeah, it's that juiciness that like touches throughout the beer that makes this beer, I think definitively a little bit different from some of the Hill, other Hill Farm set beers that I've had and makes it one of my favorites, if not my favorite. Um, I'd say, yeah, it's probably up there it's either this or Society to, uh, Society and Solitude number six are my two favorite hoppy beers from Hill Farm said. And um, yeah, there you go. This is an amazing beer, 100 out of 100. Uh, please get this beer. If you can't, get Treehouse Julius because they are neck and neck. I do want to say this one's better. And um, I don't know what else to say. Until next time, guys. Cheers. Later.